Hello, welcome to Risk Recon Academy. Today you will enjoy a very brief tour of the core features and functionality of the Risk Recon platform. Risk Recon is used by enterprises across the world to better understand and act on their own enterprise, their third party, and their fourth party cybersecurity risks. Before we get going, let me re-emphasize that this is a very brief tour. As such, we will not go into detail in any one given area. Also, we will not discuss advanced capabilities of the platform, such as the ability to tune the system to match your risk structure or your unique risk appetite. Those and other topics will be discussed in depth in other Academy sessions. Let's get going. When you log into the Risk Recon portal, you're greeted with a dashboard that provides you summary insights into the cybersecurity risk performance of the companies that you're monitoring. In this example portfolio, we're monitoring 16 companies, which have an average risk recon rating of 6.3 on a scale of 0 to 10, with 10 being the best. The first surprising insight that jumps out to me on this dashboard is that six of the 16 companies have a risk recon rating in the range of fix. A fix is a really low score. It means that risk recon observed serious cybersecurity deficiencies in the majority of the security criteria that risk recon assesses. These companies merit further investigation. Other widgets are quite self-explanatory. Companies that have been recently added, those that are the lowest rated, and companies that have had the largest risk recon rating drop in the last 30 days. Each one of these can be expanded to show additional details. The vendor priority matrix provides rapid insight into the risk performance of our portfolio. It does this by visualizing the risk performance of the portfolio along the dimensions of the risk recon rating on the x-axis and the importance of the organization to our company on the y-axis. In our case, we're using an inherent risk rating structure of critical, high, medium, and low, which is something that can be customized for your portfolio. For example, there are four companies that are rated as critically important to our organization that have a risk recon performance rating of fix. These are companies that we really need to prioritize. The last widget we'll talk about on the dashboard is the issue priority matrix. It summarizes all of the issues across the 16 companies in our portfolio along the dimensions of issue severity and asset value. Ideally, you wouldn't have any or very few issues in that upper right. For example, our portfolio has 298 critical severity issues that exist in high value systems. Now keep in mind that high value systems are ones that Risk Recon observed to be collecting or transiting sensitive data or providing sensitive functionality. There's a lot of risk there. It looks like Udrain Galactic University is responsible for most of these issues, followed by Outer Rim Supply. We'll be taking a further look at Outer Rim Supply in a moment. Before we go there, let's talk briefly about these other tabs. The Portfolio tab provides functionality that enables you to manage the companies in your portfolio, add, remove, categorize according to the risk structure that you've implemented. The Data Search tab allows you to search across various dimensions of the data that Risk Recon collects on the companies. And it enables you to answer a wide variety of questions that only you can anticipate. The Reports tab provides a really cool set of pre-canned reports that we'll get into in more detail later. Let's go ahead and dive into Outer Rim Supply and get our assessment done here. So taking a quick look at the detailed assessment behind Outer Rim Supply's cybersecurity rating, I see that based on the trend line, and I'm gonna actually go to the all-time trend line, uh, they've been performing in a pretty narrow band. Back in July 2017, they were a 5.8, now they're a 6.9. Some slight improvement, but not great. The trend line is interactive, so I can see, for example, why did their score drop in September 2018? Decrease in software patching performance, threat intelligence, email security. The industry data helps me benchmark, you know, where do they sit relative to peers in their industry? They're at the bottom there. The security domain ratings give me insight into the performance of the different components or the domains that Risk Recon assesses. Immediately, of course, my eyes are drawn towards what's going on with web application security. Their software patching performance isn't great either. A six is low. A 2.4 in the case of web application security is terrible. We'll dive into those in a minute. The risk priority matrix provides a really useful visualization that helps me just visually judge whether they're managing risk well or not. 
And in this case, I conclude they're not. Why? Because they have high and critical severity issues that exist in high and medium value assets. We get into what that means, how Risk Recon does that in another academy session. But suffice it to say that companies that manage risk well have very few issues in the upper right. Outer rim supply is not. If you look at the risk priority one issues, the 19 critical severity issues in high value systems, just based on the summary, it looks like there's some really serious stuff going on there. Databases on the internet. Wow, some old Magento running in their environment. Company description, subsidiaries, in case they wanna dive into a, a specific subsidiary. Uh, and then the company overview provides a nice summary of their IT environment as observed from the outside in. Pretty big footprint, 118 web servers. Here's their hosting providers. Looks like I better crack open my AWS assessment playbook and also the Google third-party assessment playbook for them. And as far as hosting locations go, looks like they've got systems pretty widely distributed across the world. Checking to see quickly if they have anything in uh, countries that we'd be particularly concerned about. Uh, none come to mind immediately. So, all right. Well, let's go down to the next level. Taking a look at the security profile, each of the domain performance areas is summarized here. And notice that domains have underlying security criteria, so they're broken down into further details. Let's crack open software patching. I always find that interesting. 22% of the software that Outer Rim Supply is operating on the internet is end of life, at least from what Risk Recon can observe through open source intelligence and passive analytics. 26% of the software application server software is end of life. Some old PHP, wow, they've got old Magento that the Magecart crew is targeting. It's a shopping site, of course, so that's a particular concern. No open SSL issues, content management systems, doing all right. Web servers, old Apache and Nginx. Oh, forgot to mention here, for each finding, Risk Recon's showing the days open, the asset value, the issue severity, and that's where we derive the risk priority. See that show up in the matrix we're looking at. Um, I like seeing the number of days that Risk Recon has observed this being open because it tells me, you know, are they? if the days open is, is very small, that means they're on average staying on top of stuff. Here, it's clear that they're not. I mean, you're almost two years of observation of them running this Magento software. If you want details on any one of these dimensions, click on the asset value. Why is Risk Recon calling it a high value asset? Well, because it's collecting names and email addresses. Yep, GDPR regulated, CCPA regulated, I agree. Issue severity, you can crack on any one of these and you can see the CVEs associated with it along with the severity of that CVE and you know, additional details about that. This one, is rated a high value asset because it requires user authentication. Anyway, we get into that in more detail in another Academy session. Web application security has a low score. Let's check that out. So 75% of their content management system instances have the admin interface exposed to the internet. Now the danger with that, of course, is that if somebody grabs the admin password for that interface, they can change content, they can change code, they can upload malware, things like that. Not good. Uh, quick tour of web encryption. 102 out of their 249 systems have invalid encryption certificate subjects. That's a problem. However, notice here that only one, two, three, six of them are high value assets. That's where encryption matters most. Just checking again, yeah, that data should be encrypted. These other ones, the medium and low value assets are brochure sites. So encryption really isn't as important. I would want Outer Rim Supply to focus on addressing these six issues. And as a third party, I'm not too worried about you know them applying proper encryption to brochure sites. Um, there's similar details behind all of these. Let's just crack open one more, which is network filtering. And again, this is an, this is one that Risk Recon's not assigning a rating to yet, but they are providing the information. It rolls shortly into their cybersecurity rating model. It's showing that they've got. 14 unsafe network services operating on the internet, MySQL, Postgres databases on their systems. <laughs> that is not good. If there was ever a red flag that you'd look for in the cybersecurity of an organization, it's uh, just, just look to see if they're running databases on the internet raw. At least they don't have any IoT devices. 
Um, so that's the security profile. I feel like I'm oriented on their environment from a security perspective. What issues do I focus on? Well, when we look at this matrix again, you can see that in total there's about 500, 600 issues in their environment. I'm not gonna send them a list of five or 600 issues. I need a way to filter these down to the ones that really matter most to me. Uh, you know, the subset of things that represent the most material risk, like that Magento, these MySQL databases, and so forth. If I hit them up with, you know, 500 issues, they're just going to say, you know, what are you talking about? This is, most of this doesn't matter. And they might be correct. But if we can whittle down easily to the subset of issues that matter most, then we're in business. Now, we won't get into the details behind it, but Risk Recon provides you the ability to apply a risk policy and create different risk policies according to your risk structure. Notice that this vendor is rated as medium inherent risk to our organization. That's fine. Associated with that is a risk policy that filters data based for each criteria based on asset value and issue severity. The action plan presents our data with that filter applied. Notice we go from 500 issues down to 28. Web encryption, remember there were hundreds of issues. Our policy just filters it down to the six that really matter most to us. So I have an easy, consistent way in Risk Recon to drill down to the subset of issues that matter most. Here's a summary again, and rather than having the 500 or so issue, we've got all the risk priority ones. We've got the broken encryption stuff and software patching issues for the things that we care about, you know, and we've got all the unsafe networking services. And here's the web encryption stuff. So again, instead of having the hundreds of issues, we've automatically, based on a risk policy that we configured, filtered it down to the six or so that matter the most to us. Um, I can share that action plan really easily. Um, in this case, I'd probably download the PDF, but I can share it with the vendor online. Just put in their name, email, and boom, they have access to a vendor portal where they can view action plans that have been shared with them online. So Risk Recon makes it easy to collaborate. A couple more things at this vendor level. If you want to dive into the IT profile in more detail, you can see all the hosts. There's a summary by asset value. Why is this asset a high value at work.ors.ca? It's collecting a lot of sensitive data. It's really cool that Risk Recon does that. Um, risk contextualizing everything based on asset value and issue severity. Uh, if I want to dive into the geolocation stuff, I can see, you know, well, what are they hosting in you know, Bulgaria? And, you know, when you get into hosting providers, you, you can see you know, how many hosting providers they've been doing business with over time. Uh, Carenza, not familiar with them myself, but uh, certainly familiar with Amazon. This helps enrich the conversation that I'm going to have with them. It, it informs the conversation. I'm going to ask them you know, about their third-party hosting providers, see if they bring up these top ones, and, and then I'm going to talk with them about you know, how are they securing those environments. Anyway, a um, lot more capability in here. If I want to benchmark them against other organizations in my portfolio, let's say I'm benchmarking them against another company, I can see that Galactic Storage, Galactic Alliance Storage is doing a better job. Um, there's a compliance tab that measures their performance within the lens of different security standards, NIST, SIG, and so forth. And I can click into the details of those. You know, if from my perspective as a cybersecurity risk professional, a third-party risk professional, if my company's going to do business without a RIM supply, there's some serious work to do. Um, I'm going to be raising flags about software patching, web application security, you know, network services. I mean, the combination of these really call out that they have material gaps in their program. And I'm going to be focusing on the action plan that hones in on the issues that I care about for my medium risk of vendors. I'm not holding them to a super high bar, but they've got to do the basics well if I'm going to entrust them with any degree of risk. They've got to keep important software patching issues addressed. They've got to do network filtering well. I mean, these, these databases are going to get popped for sure. And they really need to do some things about just the encryption on the high value systems. So we won't be asking too much, but tactically I'll be asking them to address the issues in this action plan, but also use it to facilitate a conversation around, you know, why does this condition exist? Why are there unsafe network services and so forth? Anyway, that's the scope of what we're going to talk about for the Risk Recon platform today. 
There's other features and capabilities that we haven't gone into. We'll talk about in other sessions. Thanks for spending the time. Have a great day.